Ready, Doreen? <laughs> we are ready. Hello, everybody. Good morning. So today we are holding the annual meeting 2021 for North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. I hereby say that it's open. It's open. Yay! Okay, so now I recess it until 1130 where we'll reconvene here and conduct the business. Thank you. If, if you're a member here in the sanctuary, be sure you check in at the desk outside. Um, and if you're on Zoom, uh, check in. Make sure you've got it. And if you're on Facebook, you have to go to Zoom. Yes, Sharon. I just checked on that. I, well, I did, and I said it wrong. I hereby open the 20, 2022 annual meeting of North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Thank you. I'm reporting on 2021. That's why my mind is there. Thank you, Sharon. Bye. Thank you, Blair. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday service on such a glorious and beautiful day. We're so glad you're here or at home on Zoom or Facebook Live. We're going to start right now by singing our opening chant, Blessing to the World. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome, those here in person and those on Facebook and Zoom. Um, we welcome you here. We ask if you're here in person, please shut off the phones. Nobody calling in but God. God don't use an iPhone. So let's just take a moment and let's pray. just breathing right here and right now and recognizing that is the breath of God, that what, right where we are, God is living in, through, and as each and every one of us. So we're so grateful to know this truth, to be aware that God lives as us, and together we are agreeing that this service is blessed. Something wonderful is happening. Something magnificent is happening. We are blessing Dr. Mark. We know that he is bringing us a word that truly strikes our being, and we are lifted. We are transformed. We are healed. We are feeling the peace of the world, the peace of all things. We are feeling harmony and goodness because we are here in agreement to say, yes, God is I am. Yes, God is peace I am. Yes, God is love I am. Yes, God is I am. So something glorious is happening here and now. We bless our music department. We bless that ministry knowing they are singing a song into our soul that lifts us. We bless our tech department knowing they are absolutely on fire with the light of God right here and now. All is good. All is well. All is unfolding perfectly because we're saying yes, 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 yes. And I release this word into the law of mind where it is made manifest, and so it is. Together let us say amen. amen.
Let us join in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Mm. Mr. Sam? Yes, we're all going to sing, so please remain standing. Our congregational song, Make a Joyful Noise. All right. Oh. Make a joyful noise. what we call celebration. Okay, so right now it's our time to commune with the spirit, our meditation time. I ask you to get your feet flat on the floor, close your eyes, take a breath, and just focus on God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am, or any other mantra that fills your heart. Breathe that in right now. Exhale that right now and continue to breathe that in.
I've been saving up these tears for a thousand days and a million years. Now's the time to release all the chains that bind me. I need amazing grace from a friendly face to help me see some love in the human race. Maybe I can turn on the light that wants to shine within me. So I'm going to say yes, yes, yes to love. Going to say yes, 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 oh, yes to love. Well, there's a saying, love conquers all, so I surrender before I fall. No need to fight, I answer the call of destiny. Well, all the pain and all of the tears all the shame and all of the fears Suddenly they just disappear The moment I say yes So I'm gonna say yes 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 to love Hey, welcome to church. We are glad to have you here with us today. If you're here in person or you're with us virtually, we are happy that you are part of the community. So I've been talking about Angelus Arian's book, The Fourfold Way. And in this book, she studies the indigenous people, the first land-based people on each continent. And she found that there are tremendous similarities. Now, they're obviously not all identical. They don't all completely agree on everything all the time. 
but a good percentage of the time they do. So today, uh, well, we have talked about the way of the warrior leader. We've talked about the way of the teacher. We've talked about the way of the healer. And today we're going to talk about the way of the visionary. Now, it's not that you are one of these archetypes. It's actually that all of these archetypes exist within you in some form and some way. So the visionary. The direction of the visionary tends to be east, and the element is fire. The resource right, that they work with is this idea of vision. In the fourfold way, the activity that they engage in is to tell the truth. The instrument is the bell. The bell shows up all over the world. Isn't that interesting? And the season is summer. So following the way of the visionary, we tell the truth. But here's what it is. It's about telling the truth without blame or judgment. Mm, that might be something kind of new, huh? Telling the truth without blame or judgment. That includes blaming and judging ourselves. See, this is the principle that guides the visionary, to be able to tell the truth without blame or judgment. In indigenous cultures, the um, visionaries may have been artists or artisans or the uh, shamans, certainly. But most importantly, the, all of these indigenous societies encourage all of the members to seek and express truth. Right? So a visionary is the reminder not to forget our life dream or purpose. So this archetype is always kind of stirring up within us. Hey, remember what you came here for. You know, remember your purpose. Remember your life dream. So native cultures of the Americas hold the belief that each individual is original medicine. Now, I really like that. I think that's, a, that's just a beautiful concept that nowhere on the world are we duplicated, right? So therefore, it's important to bring our own creative spirit, our own life dream, our own purpose to Earth. Not to do so precludes healing from coming into our family life, into our professional life, into our friendship life. So, you know, once our work, I think, is to come fully forward with our gifts, with our talents, with our abilities, with our ideas, with our resources, and to meet the challenges that we face in life, knowing I have all these resources, I have gifts, I have talents, I have abilities within me. These are not useless things. These are, in fact, what God has given me to work with, to maneuver through the experiences I have in life. So Emerson said, who you are, speak so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. Right? And the way Gandhi said it was, my life is my message. Hmm. So I would ask us today, what is it that you are speaking so loudly? <laughs> What's the message that you're living? See, when we remember who we are, I think we bring our authentic self forward. The real, real us, not the us that we think we need to be to be approved of and accepted and loved by other people, but the real, real us. And so every day we choose to support our authentic self or we choose not to support our authentic self. So native peoples use authenticity synonymously with what they call the sacred hoop. And so being connected with uh, your own spirituality when we come home to who we are, you know, the majority of traditions cite that there are two patterns that take us out of our sacred hoop. And one is the pattern of denial, and the other is the pattern of indulgence. Not that I would know anything about either of those things, <laughs> I'm here to tell you. So I've had to study them. No, it's okay. So, so by denial, what they mean is avoiding people and experiences. Because under that, they believe that there is a fear that we can't handle the conflict. You know, or, or that the situation is just too much for us. You know, under it is a deep need for peace and balance and harmony. So in deep denial, I think we will abandon ourselves to keep the peace rather than communicate our feelings directly. And with regards to indulgence, when we're dramatic or we sensationalize our experience, that never happened in Hollywood, did it? Um, we may exaggerate uh, to seek attention, you know? So underneath, though, is the need for approval and acceptance. So visionaries, visionaries, and again, this is an aspect, this archetype exists within all of us. Visionaries dissolve polarities 
and paradoxes that are found in patterns of denial and indulgence. So there was a 13th century Persian poet by the name of Rumi. I know many of you know his work. And he describes this process. And the way he says it is, out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there's a field. I'll meet you there. Oh. Right? So beyond this is right and this is wrong, there's a place beyond all of that. And that's where we want to meet. Now, I think for us as students of science of mind, this means that we all move up in consciousness. You know, that we are informed from a higher ideal. So we can free the field of creativity that exists in each of us by moving out of ideas of wrongdoing and right doing. Right? When we can answer yes to the question, now hear this, is my self-worth as strong as my self-critic? Oh boy. That I think I was going to say that a lot of days that is not the case uh, for me. Uh, but asking the question helps. It's like, oh, OK, the critic, my self-critic, is really strong. Why am I listening? So why am I being guided? Why am I willing to give in to that so much rather than listen to that part of me, the voice of God within me, which I believe is the voice of our own self-worth? Um. So Rumi suggests that the field of unlimited creativity is always available when we're connected with our own authenticity. So the way of the visionary maintains authenticity and stays in the sacred hoop. And the way we do that is by telling the truth without blame or judgment. You know, in some cultures, this is called speaking with spirit tongue. So communication that carries integrity always considers timing and context before the delivery of the content. Right? In other words, just because you say something doesn't mean people hear you or get it. Right? That this, what this archetype is talking about is to consider the timing. Is now the time for me to share what I want to share? Is this context that we are involved in, is this the right context to share it? See, because, you know, they say just because we say something, it doesn't mean that that communication is received, does it? Because <laughs> God knows, I think I gave a lot of communication in my lifetime, but nobody received it. It was just me, you know, shouting in the wind. Um, so the fourfold way of seeing is this. It involves intuition and perception, and insight, and vision. And so the visionary archetype impels us to bring our voice and our creativity into the world. Right? So the human resource of vision opens the creative spirit and pulls our voice and authenticity into the world. See, it's that vision. So psychologist Rollo May said, if you do not express your own original ideas, if you do not listen to your own being, you will have betrayed yourself. Ugh. Now, how many of us have felt that? Oh, my gosh, right? So in Africa, it is said that if you can talk, you can sing. And if you can walk, you can dance. So in indigenous cultures, our favorite songs are our power songs. And so we've started this conversation one other week, that they're connected to the creative aspect of who we are, and they reveal important aspects of our own authenticity. So one of the things I'm going to ask you to think about this week, if you don't know already, are what are your really, really favorite songs? Now, I just want to suggest to you that as we look for our favorite songs, the point of this is that these songs lift us up. They feed us. They empower us. These are not the put your head in the oven songs, OK? <laughs> not those. You know, this is not I can't live if living is without you. Oh. <laughs> the doormat's anthem, you know? I mean, it's like, you know. It is also believed that the most powerful song, the most powerful song, and this is cross-culturally, is the one that you create with your own melody and your own words. That's the most powerful song. So the way Bobby McFerrin said it is like this. He says, I pray and I sing. And sometimes my prayer is my singing. And I think that's perfectly appropriate. So cross-culturally, they teach that there are three levels of prayer. 
And we all know this. There is that prayer of petition, you know, for some particular outcome. God, help me! Right? That's a really good prayer. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, there are the prayers of worship. And so we all understand that, where we go to be with God just to be with God because it fills our heart and feeds our soul and lifts us up and reminds us of who we truly are. And then there are the prayers of gratitude, which are incredibly important. And I remember um, a minister years ago, Johnny Coleman, she had the Christ Universal Temple in Chicago, this enormous, enormous church there. And I remember hearing from her that she would say that gratitude in advance of receiving is the highest form of prayer. To be grateful before you receive the healing, the goods, the relationship, the peace of mind, whatever. Being grateful for it in advance is a very, very high form of prayer. Um, in indigenous cultures, they talk about mirrors. And they will, or that we are all mirrors for each other. So this is not a new concept to us. And so they will sew some kind of reflective material into their clothes, a, a reflective glass, or if they have mirrors or something like that. And so they say that we are mirrors for each other in three ways. Someone could be in our life and they could be a clear mirror for us. And these would be individuals that we idealize or believe we can't be like them. So those are the pedestal people. There are smoking mirrors, people we have difficulty with, and we really hope we're not like them. You know, God, I hope I'm not like that. God, please don't let me be like that. And then there are what's called split mirrors, people we like and admire, yet we experience some kind of fear or constriction in their presence. You know? So Confucius said, beware the man who laughs and his belly does not jiggle. That is a dangerous person, right? So if we're not connected to our integrity, we're dangerous. If we're not connected to the integrity that we know, we're dangerous. So Ethel Barrymore said it like this, you grow up the day you have the first real laugh at yourself. Mm -hmm. So what we're encouraging here is to daily listen to your intuition. Ernest Holmes is a big fan of intuition. You know, the science of mind teaching is preparing us for mystical consciousness. And in mystical consciousness, we are always, always, always being guided by that voice of God within. You know, and, and Ernest says that intuition is God in humankind. So that intuition is not like, oh, these are just those crazy ideas coming to me again. If it truly is intuition, it is the voice of God within you. So we want to listen to intuition. And daily we have to ask ourselves, what is it that inspires me today? Because it's interesting. You know, what inspired you last week or a month ago or a year ago may not be what's throwing the log on your fire today. Right? So we have to really look and say, what inspires me? So this is like, whether it's a TV program or a movie or a book I'm reading or who I'm having a conversation with or who I'm spending time with, what inspires me today? What is my current capacity for truth-telling without blame or judgment? So you're going to have to think about this one this week. You know? This is one we really have to think about because we probably all have areas where we do this pretty well, and then we have other areas where it's like, mm, maybe not so much. No. So with who and in what situation do I feed my false self? You know this already. You know, the people, the situations, the places where you show up not as the best version of yourself. How do we know that? Because when that's, that meeting is over, that interaction is over, we are not pleased with who we have been. You've got to sing your favorite songs. I'm going to suggest come up with about five. Yeah, five seems like a good number. Come up with about five of those. Where in my life have I brought forward the creative aspects of myself? So where are you doing it? Where are you really bringing forward that creative impulse within you? And ask yourself, what is my original medicine? And by your original medicine, what we're talking about is what are my gifts? What are my talents? What did I come here to express? What did I come here to put into the salad? No. <laughs> um, what makes me laugh? This is really important. This is really important. What makes you laugh? And do you give attention to that regularly? 
in what situations and with what people do I abandon myself? Ah, again, something to think about and look at this week. And again, ask yourself, who are my clear mirrors? Those that I idealize but think I can't be like that. My smoky mirrors, the people that I might have difficulty with and hope that I am not like them. My split mirrors, the people that I admire but I feel constriction for some reason around them. Well, it has not been a quiet week in Lake Wobegon, has it? Our world is very, very active. And so um, considering that we all have four archetypes within us, what I think would be helpful for us is we're going to spend the next couple of minutes praying, and I want to um, emphasize and focus on peace. So of course, you know, we can't begin to pray for peace without first looking within ourselves and saying, where am I not peaceful? Or maybe a better way to ask is, where am I at war? Where am I personally at war? You know, am I at war with my neighbor who keeps putting their trash bins in front of my garage door? <laughs> or am I at war with something on a bigger scale? It doesn't matter because if that exists within us, we will not be the generation to bring peace. You know, so it, the greater good that we aspire to see on the face of the earth has to be present in us first. Right? So, I would ask you now to turn your attention inward with me. And we'll begin by, thank you, thank you so much. By bringing our attention to the awareness, to the pattern of our breath. And just notice that you're breathing in and notice that you're breathing out. And be with that breath. You might silently say to yourself, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out, just to come fully present to this moment. And recognizing in this most holy and sacred moment that right where we are, the place whereon we stand is holy ground. That God is present here in its fullness, in its allness. And we are all connected with each other in the mind and in the heart that is God. There truly, truly is only one of us here and we're all it. So it is in this awareness that I invite us all to be still for just a moment and let God love us. And let that feeling, that sensation of love, become more and more real for you. I know and accept for each and every one of us today that God's love within us is our strength. That God's love is our protection. That God's love is our light in the midst of every appearance of darkness. And that God's love is the fulfillment of every hunger and every thirst God's love is our source and our supply. So I believe, I know and I declare that the love of God is ever present, not just right here where we are, but it moves out from this sanctuary to embrace everyone in the world. And in particular, we think about the Ukraine this morning and know that God is anchored in every person there, that that spirit of the living God, that is love itself, is present in every person there. And in the mind of God, we are already all one, and God never works against God's self. God could never be divided. It would cancel itself out. So I claim that the peace of God is the reality for the Ukraine, for all of us, for all people everywhere. For in the presence of God's love, all is well in our lives and in our soul, in our world. And so again, today, I invite us to be still, and let God love us. In other words, allow yourself to feel the very love of the infinite spirit coursing through your being, healing everything unlike itself, releasing what does not serve. Any grievance we have anywhere with anyone, we let it go now so that we ourselves might truly be a vessel for peace in the world. And again, we let that peace emanate out from us not only to include our family members and friends, people we hold near and dear, but whoever comes into our mind, whoever comes into our heart, oh, and I've got to say it, and anyone in particular that we want to keep out of our heart, this is the opportunity to do spiritual work. <sighs> so open your heart a little more. And you might say, humanly, I just can't love them. They just really upset me. 
And so know with me that what you humanly cannot do, that the Spirit of God within you absolutely can do. That through the power of God, the grace of God, the majesty of God, we have the capacity to expand our ability to love and include more. And so I speak these words, and I know that they take on the presence of God's living spirit and become the very circumstances of our life today. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth, that we are all tenderly loved by God. We are lifted, we are healed, we are blessed. We accept it not only for ourselves; we accept it for every person on the face of the earth. Peaceful, healing, blessed, loved. And so again, with an open, gracious, full heart, I release this word into God's perfect law, I know it's done, and so it is, and so we let it be. Together we all say, amen. All right, we'll sing together once. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. So blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. So blessed. I'm feeling very blessed, everybody. I was looking up a little history on the songs I'm going to sing, and these are some interesting facts. Okay, so this is the month of February where we celebrate African American History, Black History Month. This is the last day of it, I believe. And um, 213 years ago, there was a man named Abraham Lincoln. He was born in this month. We celebrated him, many of us, because the Civil War, you know, he was uh, recognized as having ended slavery. I mean, he gets credit for that a lot as the president for whom slavery ended during his tenure. So we're celebrating Black History Month in this month. We're celebrating his birthday in this month. And we celebrate Valentine's Day, which is about love. And I don't know why, but that kind of brings tears to my eyes because that is what unifies us, right? Love. So um, in 1900, there was a group of children in a segregated school in Jacksonville, Florida, and they performed the words of this song that James Weldon Johnson wrote. Uh, they performed it in 1900, in the year 1900, and later it was accepted as the, in, as the NAACP's national anthem, the Black National Anthem, set to music by a musician like our, our own Sam, his brother, James Rossman Johnson. So today, I'm just going to sing one verse because it's a long song. I had to learn it when I was in junior high, but I'm gonna sing just one verse, and we can just remember what their hearts were, were singing in the early 1900s, okay? 
Then I'm going to share a song that you all know, and we'll sing it together about love. We got, we got this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start out. I'm going to start out. Sam's like, you, it's you. Okay, let's do this. I, I told him not to join me on this, and then I tell him to join me. Here we go, everybody. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has brought us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has taught. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory. Is one. Let's meet in that field that he talked about, that Rumi wrote about. In that field where we come together. Yes, one more time. your fellow man, lend him a helping hand, put a little love in your heart, yes, you see it's getting late, so please don't hesitate.
She brings church wherever she goes. Thank you. Beautiful sister. And you can get her music at tinameeks.com. T-I-N-A-M-E-E-K-S. Tinameeks.com. You want to pick that up. You want to be waking up going, put a little love in your heart. Okay. So if this is your first time here, we welcome you. We have an information packet for you out on the patio. If you're on Zoom or Facebook, we have hosts there that can answer any questions about our church or our teaching. So we welcome you. Thank you so much. And if you were touched today, if your soul was lifted, if you felt spiritually fed, please tithe. Give whatever that you can. There's many different ways to do it, but go to nhcrs.org slash give and you'll see all the different ways you can support our spiritual ministry. Thank you. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom if you're on Facebook. Switch over to Zoom and you can have a one minute miracle. We all need that right now. We'll all take a one minute miracle. This Wednesday is our Taze service. It's a meditation starts at 6.50. The service is at 7 p.m. And it's a wonderful service filled with just readings and music and prayer where we really just get to anchor ourselves in sacred chanting. It's just delicious. And the delicious part is actually the potluck afterwards on the patio. So bring your favorite dish. Our youth church is open, 9.45 a.m. service. We welcome all our youth of all ages. Please come and join us. And uh, this Sunday, today, 1 p.m. on Zoom, we have our grief support with our practitioner, Carol, Carol Winokur. Please join us if you'd like to do that. And most importantly, of course, today, 11.30, it's our annual meeting. So all the members of the church, you can be in person here, or you can go onto the Zoom, the same Zoom link you're on right now, right, Blair? Yes, indeed, that same Zoom link, and join us. Um, you know, for our annual meeting, uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Please come and join us. And there is a memorial service. Um, Friday, March 11th, for Emeritus Practitioner Dolores Cardellucci. It's at 2 p.m. in the sanctuary and Zoom. Please all come with this celebration of life. And guess what? We're so excited. March 6th, we're going to be having two services again. Thank you for holding it in your consciousness. I know. Hello, bravo. How wonderful. And just FYI, FYI, the Zoom and the Facebook and the Youth Church are at the 945 only, just for your information. We have our Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. And on March 1st, our morning meditation, it meets every morning. 
Monday through Saturday, and it's evolving from a 15-minute to a 20-minute meditation, providing us with the opportunity to really anchor our day, commune with each other, and it starts at 7.55 a.m., ends at 8.15 a.m., and you know what? There is no better way to start your day. Yeah. Yes. Any other information you need, anything you're curious about, it's all on our website, nhcrs.org, nhcrs.org. So go there, join us, be blessed, and thank you. Let's all stand and sing the peace song. Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I, can never be separate. I, live I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I, all fear. I, am, living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.